Hello, and welcome to Storytime with Tristan. Join me today for a great story about a little squirrel named Earl, and learn how we can make predictions with our story. I hope you are ready for a great read aloud. Do you make predictions when you read? It's one of my favorite reading strategies. A prediction is a guess you make using text or picture clues and your own knowledge. Making predictions can help you check to make sure you're understanding what you're reading. You can make predictions before you read by looking at the title and cover illustrations to predict what the book will be about. You can also make predictions while you read by thinking about the characters, setting, and what has already happened. This can help you predict what might happen next in the story. Sometimes our predictions are right, and sometimes they're not, and that's okay. Getting predictions correct every time is not the point in making predictions. Predictions help us to actively think ahead, ask questions, and understand the story better. Let's practice together. Earl the Squirrel by Don Freeman. The title and the pictures are helping me to make predictions about this story. I think that this is Earl and that this story might be about him collecting acorns to help prepare for the winter because I see that he has a scarf on, so maybe it's getting cold outside. Let's find out. Early one autumn morning, a mother gray squirrel sat talking with her young son, Earl. It is high time you went out and learned how to find acorns on your own, she said. So our prediction was correct. This is Earl, and he is going to find some acorns. But Earl didn't know the first thing about finding acorns. So away he sailed to visit his friend, Jill. Good morning, Earl, said Jill. I wonder why a squirrel is visiting a little girl about finding acorns. Shouldn't a squirrel know how to find acorns? Here is an acorn I've saved for you. Earl was pleased to have found such a big acorn so quickly. His mother would be happy. He twitched and twirled his tail, which was his way of saying, thank you very much. And here's a nutcracker to help you open it, added Jill. Earl scampered home, eager to show his mother what he had found. But when she saw him, she said, Earl, come in here this instant. I want to speak to you. I'm predicting that... Earl is going to get in trouble because his mom said, come in here this instant. And I know that if my mom tells me to come in this instant, that I'm probably in trouble about something. What are your predictions? Who ever heard of a squirrel needing a nutcracker? Why, it's absurd, his mother scolded. You got it from Jill, didn't you? I bet she gave you the acorn too. That girl is making you into the most spoiled squirrel in the world. Now, take that nutcracker right back. I think mom is serious. Has your mom ever given you that look? You're back so quickly? And you didn't want the nutcracker? Well, never mind. I have an extra special present for you. And she tied a beautiful red scarf neatly around Earl's furry neck. I really made it for my doll, she said, but he wanted you to have it. How proud Earl was of his scarlet scarf. I just learned that the word scarlet is a type of red color because I can see that his scarf is red. I'm also predicting here that mom is not going to be so happy about Earl getting this scarf because I don't think squirrels normally wear scarves, and Mom doesn't seem to like the fact that Jill is helping Earl so much. Sometimes you have to learn to do things on your own. Back home he sailed with his tail all unfurled. But when his mother saw the scarf, she said, Earl, come in here this instant. I want to speak to you. 
What are your predictions about what mom is going to say to Earl about this scarf? Who ever heard of any of us needing something around our necks to keep us warm? His mother fussed. Now, that girl has done it. You are the most spoiled squirrel in the world. How do you think Earl is feeling right now? I think that he might be upset. I see him going upstairs. Maybe he's going to his room. Sometimes when you get in trouble, you have to go to your room. And sometimes it's disappointing when you get in trouble for something. Earl knew his mother was right. That night after supper, he tied his scarf into the shape of a sack. While his mother slept out, he crept. Earl wanted to show her that he could find an acorn on his own. All night long, Earl searched in the bright moonlight under rocks, up in trees, and inside empty old mole holes without finding one single solitary acorn anywhere. By morning, Earl was very tired. In fact, he was all worn out. His ears were getting cold. He tied the scarf around his head. That's better, he said to himself. Maybe that's an old squirrel hole for me to sleep in, thought Earl. But look who was inside. Oh, excuse me, said Earl. I didn't know you lived in here. Who do you think lived here? hooted the great horned owl loudly, and who saw a squirrel wearing a scarf? My friend Jill gave it to me, Earl said proudly. By the way, could you tell me where I might find an acorn? An acorn, hooted the great horned owl. Why, certainly, there is a giant oak tree right over there full of acorns. But I wouldn't go anywhere near it if I were a squirrel, wearing a scarlet scarf. Why do you think the owl is telling him that he probably wouldn't go near the oak tree if he's wearing a scarlet scarf? I wonder what the scarf has to do with staying away from the oak tree. Conrad the bull would not like it one bit. You know what bulls do when they see red? They get awfully mad. But Earl didn't hear a word the owl had said about the bull because he was already halfway over to the tree. And look who was snoozing there so peacefully, Conrad. I'm predicting that Earl is going to have some trouble with Conrad because Earl didn't listen to what the owl told him about Conrad being there by the tree. Earl hopped on top of the bull's burly back. He didn't see Conrad's long, sharp horns. All he saw were acorns galore. Who's that tickling my shoulder? The big bull smoldered. Earl didn't see Conrad's nose. All he saw was a great way to reach the acorns. And all Conrad saw was Earl's scarf. Just then, are you making any predictions here? I'm predicting that Conrad is going to charge forward because I know that when bulls see red, they start running really fast. And I know that he's mad because his eyes here are red. What do you think is gonna happen next? Conrad got awfully mad. With one flying leap, Earl escaped up into the tree, but his scarf had come untied. It slipped off his neck and it dropped. Quick as a flash, Earl reached down and snatched his scarf. Don't you tear my beautiful present, he shouted. Earl doesn't seem to even notice that Conrad's horns are pointing right at him. I don't think Earl pays attention very much. He's so worried about his scarf and getting this acorn, he doesn't even realize that he's made Conrad mad. Conrad snorted and charged with all his might. He charged right into the tree and his horns got stuck. He kind of looks like 
Earl is waving his scarf for Conrad to charge forward. He pulled and yanked until he shook poor Earl out of the tree, along with hundreds of acorns. Boink! One fell right on top of his head. Thank you, Mr. Bull, said Earl politely. I didn't mean to put you to all this trouble. I needed only one acorn, but I guess I'll take two. Tomorrow, I'll be back for more. It doesn't seem like Earl even realizes the trouble that he was almost in with Conrad. After tying two acorns in his scarf sack, Earl threw it over his shoulder and hurried back home as fast as he could scamper. Conrad grunted and groaned until at last, with a powerful yank, he freed his horns from the tree. Down the hill he reeled, head over hoofs, until he was out of sight. I think that Earl is excited to go home and show his mom his acorn because it said that he hurried back home as fast as he could scamper. And I'm predicting that mom is going to be excited and proud of Earl for getting this acorn. I don't think Earl is going to tell her about Conrad the bull, though. When Earl arrived home, he presented one of his acorns to his mother. She saw it and said, Earl, come in here this instant. I want to speak to you. Do you think that Earl might be getting in trouble? Once inside, his mother took a bite of her ripe acorn. My, my, this is the most delicious acorn I've ever tasted. How did you find it? Oh, my lucky scarf helped me, said Earl happily. After his mother finished her acorn, he went to pay Jill a visit. On the windowsill, sitting very still, was Jill's doll. After taking out the acorn, Earl tied his scarf around the doll's neck. Here, sir, I don't think I need this anymore. Then Earl gave his tail an extra twirl. And before he swept away, he left the acorn for Jill. I think that Earl gave the scarf back because he has gained the courage to find acorns on his own and he doesn't need the scarf anymore. The next night, the moon was full and Earl returned to the giant oak tree. Thanks to Conrad, there were plenty of acorns scattered on the ground for tomorrow. But tonight, Earl scampered up to a high branch and picked one for himself. The end. I really enjoyed our story today, and I hope you did too. The next time you read a book, see if you can use the strategy of making predictions. If you liked Earl the Squirrel, make sure to check out more great stories by Don Freeman. Thanks for joining me on Storytime with Tristan. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all my latest videos. I'll see you next time for another reading adventure. Bye! Special thanks to Roy Freeman for granting permission to read aloud Earl the Squirrel.